there was a terrible actor, a truly lousy actor who was playing Hamlet. As the play went on, it got worse when he came to the famous to be or not to be soliloquy. People started throwing things at him. They took their footwear and threw it. So he got off stage and said, Well, folks, I didn't write this crap. All the miserable people in the world think there is something wrong with the creation. All the miserable people in the world think creator has made a mistake. To explain this mistake or to explain themselves into that mistake, they have all kinds of philosophies. All the philosophies on the planet, if you put them together, all of them together do not have the beauty of a single leaf in this tree, but still it occupies people for a lifetime. It gives them the kind of explanations that they like to hear. Philosophers are usually out-of-work men, not many women philosophers, eh? Out-of-work men who at least have an explanation as to why they're out of work. So these out-of-work men who have nothing else to do or nothing else to create, keep churning up philosophies. Anybody coming up with any kind of philosophy is sacrilege against creation. Nobody has any business even to generate a single thought when so much has been done. If you come here a thousand lifetimes and twenty-four hours, if you pay attention, still you will not know a minuscule part of creation. When this kind of creation is here, anybody thinking of their own nonsense is absolute sacrilege. But socially, unfortunately, the world has reached a point where if you say something that nobody understands, most people believe you're being very intelligent. Intelligence is in being able to make people understand what they could not understand. Intelligence is not in what people knew perfectly well for ages, confuse the hell out of them. That's not intelligence. <laughs> but unfortunately, it passes off as being smart, being intelligent. People have fallen in love with words and lost the world. Time to regain it. If you stand on the summit of the garbage heap of one's mind, your feet will ne never touch the ground. If your feet never touch the ground, you will never know what this is. It is this… Re it is for this reason that in this culture, wherever you see people go all out down, they want their whole body to touch the ground, not just the feet. Most part of their life or most part of the day, the very culture was designed in such a way that you walk barefoot unless you're going on rough terrain. Because we want you to be in touch with the earth. If you don't get anything else, if you as much as sit like this for ten days, you will know a lot more than reading a thousand books. Because if you just sit like this, Mother Earth will creep up into you without your permission. Don't believe that. She need not creep up because <clears throat> as this little bit of grass has shot out of the pla earth, you also just like that, little mobile. Otherwise, right now as you sit here, you are just a mound of earth, that's all you are. You may believe yourself to be something, but that's all you are, and that's not small. If you believe yourself to be something other than that, you are small. Otherwise, you are the planet itself, you are the creation itself. So you are just a bump on the planet and don't think that's small. Bellingiri Mountains, also a small bump on the planet. Himalayas, also a small bump on the planet. You too. It's in being in touch with reality in every possible way that one will know, not by thinking of nonsense, which may pass in a tea party. Existentially, it will not pass. It may pass with a bunch of fools that you've gathered around you in the form of society. It will not pass in the eyes of the Creator. If you do not pass in the eyes of the Creator, all the other distinctions that you may attain are just empty stuff. It will not stand by you. When the time to shed soil, when the time to put earth back into earth come, it will not stand by you, for sure.